Hello, this is a quick tutorial on how to use the TR8S drum rack that I've uh, created. Um, the purpose of this is really just to allow you to get MIDI pattern data into Ableton from your TR8S. So you can write your patterns on the TR8S uh, and then um, using the drum rack, we can get the, the data in uh, to Ableton and then the further advantage of using the drum rack is that it makes it very easy for us to split out the individual voices um, that uh, that uh, comprise the, the tracks so you can then edit them and um, work with them uh, in different ways than you could on the machine. Um, so uh, I'll just give you a quick overview. Um, this um, drum rack file is downloadable um, with the video. I'll post the link to it. Um, it'll be available in the file section of the, the Facebook group. Um, so what I've done is I've, uh, I've uh, mapped out all the, uh, the voices um, on the TR8S um, and that includes the alternate voice mappings as well. Um, it wasn't immediately clear to me what, what these were uh, to start with, uh, but some voices uh, permit alternate sounds. Um, so perhaps a snare uh, could have two different sounds. That only works with certain sounds, um, doesn't apply to all, uh, but when you, when you see a little flag um, for the, the, the instrument voice, um, on the TRAS indicating that an alternate voice is available, then um, you'll be able to use these. Um, if, you, if you work your way through importing some of the factory patterns, uh, you will see some of these being used. Um, the, uh, the pattern that I've uh, chosen, uh, which is 602, the trigger out demo um, for, uh, from the standard um, factory presets does use a few of these which is uh, which we'll see in a minute um, in order to use this uh, you're gonna have to set up for each for each instrument you're gonna have to just make sure that um, this value points to your MIDI interface if you're using the TRAS plugged in via USB then you should see the same as this uh, also make sure that it's set to channel 10 um, if you're using the default settings. Um, I've already preset this, so if you're using via USB, you shouldn't need to make any changes to these. Um, this is currently greyed out at the moment because I've, uh, I've got the um, output um, disabled in the settings. I'll come to that in a moment. Um, so if if, uh, if you've seen it grayed out, it's just because um, out, MIDI out is um, switched off just now on that uh, particular output. The other setting that you will need to go through and change is the audio from. Um, it depends on uh, your audio interface. Um, I've just set it up to demonstrate with, uh, with the, uh, the two inputs that the stereo output on the TRAS is feeding into Ableton just now. Um, you could, if you're using um, multiple outputs, um, either um, actually cabled or over USB, then um, you can set these to, to be separate should you wish. Um, however, remember that what we're doing here is we're bringing MIDI in. Um, this is not for recording audio, so you may as well just leave it on the, the stereo outs um, unless you're, you're doing some something uh, elsewhere in Ableton that particularly needs individual outs within the drum bus. Uh, so that's basically all you should need to do. Um, just uh, as a point, the, uh, the note numbers um, here, uh, Roland have used a slightly different scheme. Um, so you will notice that in the utility menu settings on the TRAS, that um, everything on there is an octave higher than they're represented here. Um, however, I've been in and I've set these according to MIDI note number, so they do correspond 
Um, but it's worth bearing in mind um, if you are if you've got a custom configuration and you're not using the factory default mappings. Um, the other aspect to uh, make you aware of is I've included a entry for trigger. Uh, the trigger is not defined. Um, it's unset in the TRAS settings normally. Um, so if you were planning to um, uh, record uh, or send trigger um, for the purposes of the drum rack, I've set this to MIDI note 24, um, which in Ableton corresponds to C0 and on the TRAS is represented as C1. Right, so that's the basics. Um, I've put this onto just a standard MIDI track uh, in Ableton, nothing special about it. Um, and um, after downloading the file, all you really need to do is just drag it and drop it onto that MIDI track. Um, you can then just save it here and it will appear in your, um, uh, in your preset, in your user library. Uh, so if we go into preferences and um, in order to uh, prepare for uh, recording MIDI from the TRAS, uh, what we want to do is we want to enable, uh, wrong one, we uh, have already got it on. We want to enable the, uh, the track input from the TRAS. And um, at this stage, we want to disable the output. That's to prevent the, any MIDI loop or um, stuttering occurring, uh, because if this is enabled, it will be sending MIDI data out as it's coming in. Um, so we need that off for the time being. Uh, you want sync to be on so that um, the TRAS and Ableton are um, playing together. Um, if sync's on and you've got auto start enabled on your TRAS, it will start as soon as you hit the record. Um, the, there is a bit of an issue with um, there being latency. Um, you will notice that uh, the incoming MIDI notes are not lining up um, particularly well with your Ableton grid. Um, there's two ways to handle this. You can either um, trial and error, adjust this, record a little bit of MIDI, adjust it, record a little bit, um, and just uh, until you're kind of happy with um, how close it lines up. Um, the alternative is you actually just ignore it and um, record the MIDI in anyway, and then once the MIDI is recorded in, uh, realign it within Ableton yourself, just select all and move it. Uh, to wherever you need. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's all we need to know there. Um, in case, right, so actually to record, let's just um, put that back to zero and just, we just hit record. I'll, you hear it's, it's a little bit stuttery when it starts off. It's, it's just a common problem with Ableton. Um, we could um, put a lead in um, when recording, or we could um, already start uh, Ableton and um, have the and start the TRAS manually um, to try and avoid that. Um, again, it's the sort of thing you can edit out in Ableton once you've got the the MIDI data in. Okay, so we've got about 16 bars there. Um, that should do us. Um, first thing I want to do once I've, I've got what I need in is to go back into the preferences. And at this stage, I now want to switch off the input because uh, I have what I need for now. I also want to switch off the sync because I no longer want the TRS to play the pattern at the same time. And I want to switch on the output because I'm just going to be sending note data out to the TRAS and using Ableton to trigger the sounds. Right. And um, if we have a quick look, uh, you can see we've got lots of data recorded there. Um, let's just bring that down. So we've got exactly 16 bars. 
and uh, I'm going to zoom in and just sort of see how the, the timing looks. It's not that bad. It's not precisely on the beat either, but um, we can work with that. Um, okay, so um, if I click back on here, now this is the bit that is really nice. If you want to extract out the bass drum, um, select it in here, right click and just say extract chains. Um, and then that's it. We now have the bass drum on a separate track. Uh, if we go back here and I want the snare, again, extract chains. And that has produced the bass drum. Um, we can, um, you can obviously select uh, multiple lines in here at one time um, if you want. Um, or just take what you need as you need them. Um, it uh, it removes um, it removes the item from here as we go through it. So uh, you'll see the bass drum isn't uh, appearing. The alt bass drum is, but the actual bass drum has disappeared from this list here. Um, if I go in here, you see the only uh, note that's listed here is the bass drum, and similarly with the snare. Um, so you can work your way through. Let's just try that with the high tom. Um, yeah, that's the high tom there. Um, let's just find that. Extract chains. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, that's there. Um, and yeah, high toms disappeared from there. Um, we've got a couple of instruments on the alts. We've got a mid tool, mid tom alt there. Um, we've got snare drum alt and a low tom alt. So, um, and we've also got lots of trigger down the bottom there. Um, and that's that's basically the process. Um, what I can now do is play this back, let you hear it. And that's, uh, that's basically how you use the drum rack. Okay, I hope this helps.